Yes, the man is described as a Giga Chad in the video. I'll take it. I, I like this model already. So I want to go over a mysterious model release. Now, there were three versions of this model released called Apollo. There was a 3B, a 5B, and a 7B. And Apollo was essentially a model that could watch a video, quote unquote, and then answer questions about the video kind of in a chat format, as you can see here running on this locally hosted web interface. Now, I call this model mysterious because it was released and then basically a day or a day and a half later, it was just totally gone. The Hugging Face, the Spaces demo, and the GitHub were just deleted and removed. Now, it is kind of weird. So, unfortunately, instead of just going through a GitHub page or a Hugging Face page to actually kind of give an introduction to the model, I just have the research paper, which is the only thing left online pertaining to this model. Now, fortunately, for those of you who want to experiment with this at home, there were individuals who had downloaded the weights and everything pertaining to them and have re-uploaded them on Hugging Face. So what you actually see me running right here is from one of those uploads instead of from the official one. So at the conclusion of this demonstration, I will do a quick install and running tutorial so that you can go ahead and play with this yourself. Now, to give a little introduction to the model, it was benchmarking rather impressively, at least in terms of what was written in this paper. So if we go down here, we can kind of see that the Apollo 1.5B, the 3B, and the 7B. So it was a 1.5B. I don't know what I... So there wasn't a 5. There was a 1.5, a 3, and a 7. I had been mistaken there. But you can kind of see that these are outclassing models in much larger size format. So essentially down here, the 7B is benchmarking higher than some 30 and 40B models. And that was something that was kind of touted and rather interesting about this. Now, I don't normally go into actually reading the papers and getting hyper-technical on the channel, but for this one, I do find it a bit interesting just in terms of the model architecture. So essentially to put it simply and not to pretend like I understand all of this myself, a video and image encoder were combined to allow this model to actually watch videos. And basically, apparently, they tested it with an hour of video and it was still able to kind of watch it and answer questions about it following that. So that was rather interesting. And we can just kind of see here that they combined the Intern Video 2 and the Siglip SO400M and Image encoders do not encode temporal information, while video encoders have weaker spatial representations. So following this, embeddings generated were interpolated and concatenated along the channel dimension. So basically, they combined them, and that led to better performance in video and temporal reasoning and things of that sort. Now, if you want to know more about that, scroll down here past the appendix, and you can kind of see... Um, where it just kind of goes over that. So the image and video encoders are interplated and concatenated and then sped up more and then into the hidden dimension and things like that. So essentially, <laughs> it's it's all rather technical. Now, isn't that like a Batman quote or something like that when they take over the... Off Never mind. Okay, so what I've done here is I fed it a sampled, uh, a smaller version, like 540p of my video on the leak disaster of this computer. And you can see here that this is a 10 minute video and I can essentially just ask it questions about the video. And we can see that this does use a rather large amount of VRAM. So I have actually forced it to run on my second card here because when trying to run OBS and this on the same card, it just wouldn't work. So. And I've also done a few other um, memory saving things, which I'll go over. And we can see the computer has a transparent side panel revealing green and black pipes, blue LED lights, and various components like the H150 water cooling system. Okay, so it is, it's getting confused. It's seeing the HX1500i on my power supply, but still, that's really not bad for seeing a 540p 10 minute long video. Now, I'll ask it, does the man go anywhere in the video? And we can just kind of see it working and it's using a lot of video RAM. And it takes a little bit of time to respond.
He briefly reads, leaves the room to return with a brown paper bag filled with more components. And that is correct because in this video for like 10 seconds, I showed leaving the house and going to Micro Center to buy more coolant to refill the system. So that is really quite cool. Now, the example input video was a rather long commercial from YouTube. I think it was just a compilation of commercial clips. And the default query was what brands appear in this video. And essentially, it would list all of the names of the 12 or 14 or so brands and it would do that well. Now I'm not using the demo input because when testing things, I like to test them on new unseen data that kind of pertains to me personally and my channel and things of that sort. But this really is just kind of cool. And I wanted to quickly give an overview of this because it was just interesting first and foremost. So I actually began playing with this before it got removed from the internet, but fortunately it is back up in Hugging Face, not from the official authors, but it is there in a way that you can actually go ahead and play with it yourself. So I'll ask it some more. So would you consider the man in the video to be a Giga Chad? <laughs> so, let's see what it... <laughs> Now, while that loads, I do want to note that some folks had kind of guessed that they may have pulled it because it was a meta adjacent release, just in terms of the actual authors and things like that and their associations. However, the backbone of this was actually a Quen model. So some people thought maybe Meta looked at that and was like, why no llama? This is a bad look. But that's totally guess and so, yes, the man is described as a Giga Chad in the video. I'll take it. I, I like this model already. Um, <laughs> what actions does the man perform? <laughs> All right, let's see. So it is really like just kind of cool to be able to do this locally. And I haven't looked too much in terms of the actual video related models. I've done a lot with models that can look at images and things like that, but this one is, is rather cool. The man adjusts the computer components, connects cables, pours liquid into the water cooling system and tests the setup. That I'll ask it like one or two more questions. And it's just interesting to be able to play. Some people also hypothesized maybe it was producing like um, NSFW responses to videos, but I haven't personally checked that. So, <laughs> the overall tone of the video is informative and detailed, focusing on the process of assembling and configuring high performance. <laughs> computer setup. All right, so basically I wanted to just kind of give a quick demonstration of this. Now, what I'm going to do now is do a tutorial on how to get this running on your local system and essentially what I did to do that, just to try to provide more value and so others as myself interested in these things can play with them at home. Now I want to do a quick install tutorial so that anyone interested at home can go ahead and run it themselves as I'm doing here. So to begin that, we're going to start on this thread on the local llama subreddit. And essentially this individual got the hugging face spaces demonstration that was originally posted with the models from their own authors and got it working locally. So for that, we can go right here and I will put up a blog post on my website outlining this and all the links will be there as well. So I will post that either in the comments or the description so you don't have to try to type these links in your browser by watching the video, which would suck. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do is essentially just go ahead and follow the steps to get this repository cloned and the requirements installed. Now, the author had stated that they went ahead and used Python 3.11, so that's what I'm gonna use here. And I am going to make a new Conda environment. Now, I'm typing it weird because I already have this on my system, so I need to come up with a different folder name, so. And we'll do that and typing dash Y will just automatically say yes to everything here. And now that we're there, we're going to go under the code here and copy the repository URL and we will type git clone. However, since I already have a folder named Apollo on my machine, I'm just going to clone it into a folder named the same thing as the Conda environment just to keep things easy. 
All right, and once we're there, we're going to go into the folder that it was cloned to, which if you're doing this at home will likely be Apollo, not how I have spelled it, but whatever you want to do for that is fine. And then we're going to do pip install bash r requirements. And it will go ahead and install everything. Now, a lot of mine will go much quicker perhaps than yours because I have done this already. So it's cached on my system. Now, before we run this, there are a couple of changes that we need to make to this app.py script to actually get it to work properly. Now, the first one of those is to get rid of the spaces import since we don't have the hugging face spaces thing to run it locally here. Following that, we are going to scroll down here to the model URL, and this is pointing to the original now deleted repository. So instead of pointing it to that, we are going to go here to the new Hugging Face repository with all of the models, and I'm going to use the 3B. So basically to point it here, all you do is copy here and paste, and then we go back into here and the new model URL will be pointing to the kind individual who uploaded them and saved a lot of people some hassle to be able to still run this. <laughs> so once that's done, we're going to go down here to around line 133 and we are going to delete this decorator. And then we are going to go down once more to line 182 and delete this decorator and that will save it. Now. An individual on Reddit who got this running on two 3060s had a good point where basically if you want to save some more memory, you can reduce this clip sampling, clip sampling ratio <laughs> from 0.65 to 0.5. So I will just go ahead and do that here as well. As I did do that, I was facing some out of memory errors and doing this actually allowed it to properly run, which was awesome. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do to run this, which is a personal thing and something you won't have to do on your own machine, is I'm going to force this to use card one since OBS is using card zero for me. So if I try to run this on card zero as well as having OBS, it's just not going to work. All right. So now that that's done and everything here is correctly modified to actually be able to work on your local system, we're just going to run it. And... If this is the first time that you're running it, it will go ahead and actually download these model files from Hugging Face. However, since I have run this already on my machine, it's all cached. So we're just going to basically wait for it to load. And then once it does, we'll be able to go into the Gradio web interface and test this out on our local machine. Cool, so now it is ready and you can see that it is using card one here. So card zero can just be hogged by OBS. <laughs> and we open this. We will drag our test video into it and you got to kind of give it a second for the video to load in here and then we can go ahead and just ask it a question, which we've already done, but for the sake of consistency and continuity, I will go ahead and run it here to conclude this quick little installation tutorial. And you will get relevant output in your terminal session here as well for when you're actually running this. And that does include the actual output of what the model is going to say here. Okay, and this is really uh, <laughs> more in depth than what I ran before, which is interesting, but yeah. All right, and really the only final thing is if you want to save a little bit more memory um, as this individual does state here, you can set this environment variable and that will also help with memory constrained systems. So if you just set that in your environment and following that, um, that's pretty much it. If you have two GPUs, I would not um, add this line as it will mess things up as I found out when I was playing with this earlier. So other than that, that's pretty much the installation tutorial and it's cool that thanks to the community we are still able to play with this model.